Hey everyone, this video is on throwing an oval altered piece with a flat bottom. Uh, I throw it with uh, a totally um, bottomless cylinder that I shape and I throw the bottom into kind of a cool little disc that I oval and uh, it makes a great little little pot. Um, you can do them of all sorts of different sizes and they just really are quite lovely. If you need to review any throwing processes, check out up above and I will link my wheel throwing playlist. So I'm starting off this piece with, oh, it's probably about two pounds. I didn't actually measure it to pay attention, but um, I recommend to my students that they can cone it if they have difficulty centering. Once it's centered, you want to lower it into that hockey puck, um, kind of determining how wide you want it to be. So when I drop my middle, I drop it all the way to the bat and I open the interior of the wall to the size that I need the interior to be and then I'll just pull up on the exterior to bring the extra from the exterior up. Now again there is no base to this it is dropped right down to the bat. One thing that I do do though is I leave the very base of the wall just a little bit thicker, that will enable me to attach it to the base without having to do a coil. I leave just a little tiny, like a, a mountain edge, or some people call it a skirt, on the interior edge of that opening. That way, again, it's wider when I go to attach the wall to the base. I'm trimming off some of the extra from the outside there just to make it nice and even. And then, I'm ready to make it oval while it's still real plastic. So notice that I threw some water on the bat and inside. The water will allow it to slide. Now I'm just going to take my hands, kind of squish it a little bit, and there we go. So that, I'm ready to get leather hard. Now for the base of it, um, I'm going to throw, it's a slightly smaller piece of clay. That might be maybe a pound and a half or something. So for the base, I'm going to be throwing a disc that is about the same width as the skinny section of the pot. And I can use the dowel rod just like I would do a plate. So this is going to be a little bit thicker. This is probably about three quarters of an inch thick because I'm going to be stretching this. So the width again is the width across the short side of the oval. Then I put a few throwing rings in it and now I'm going to cut that and I'm going to let that sit up for a little bit. I don't want it to get totally leather hard but I am going to sit it up. So you can see how thick it is, about as thick as my thumb. And those are my two pieces. I need to let those dry a little bit. Now they've been drying throughout the uh, day and I'm ready to make the disc into the bottom. So remember I cut it before but I'm going to cut it again just to release it. Now I want to stretch this lengthwise so the fun thing is this spiral is going to turn into a really cool elongated oval spiral. So I stretch it by kind of holding and letting it kind of tap the table as I'm pulling it away. Or you could do the kind of the toss as long as you let the bottom edge hit first, it's going to stretch and go farther away. So some kids can, some kids like this method, some kids struggle with it. Um, you can do the toss and pull if you want to as well, the first method that I did. Now I just want to make sure that it's going to be adequately large enough. And notice it's a lot thinner now, so it's more like half an inch or three-eighths of an inch thick. And now it's been sitting up for maybe another hour or so. And uh, when I did place the wall on the bottom, I will admit, I think that base was a little wetter than it probably should have been uh, when I stuck it on there because the wall got a little bit stuck. But that's okay. I can pry it off. I am going to have a little teeny rip that um, I'll repair here in a minute, but it's not a big deal. So the clay just got a little bit stuck. All right, so I have the wall positioned approximately where I want it. Now I'm going to take my knife and trim away some of the extra down there at the base. Now you don't have to do it like this, but one of my recommendations is to angle the bottom edge inward a little bit. Like I like to have it angled in, kind of uh, gives it a, like a nice little graceful kind of a 
kind of a trim coming down to the, the bottom or the foot sort of an area. And um, it's just, for me, it's a nice way to finish it off. So you'll see in a little bit how I do that. So this is, again, this is leather hard at this point. Um, again, it was a little sticky when I put it together and you can see my little edge ripped off. So I'll just reattach uh, that little edge before I go to join it. So um, just to stick that back on, again, I'm just gonna slip and score that piece. If you wait until your base and your walls are just a little bit drier, uh, so they're not super plastic when you put them together, that does help to prevent that from happening. So a uh, little bit of scoring and slipping, and I'm good to go with that little um, part that I broke off on accident. And then, oh, and I, I should mention, I have my slip and squeezy bottles I keep in my room, and the squeezy bottles have a little QR code, so you can watch a video on how to you know, use the slip and clean the bottle tips back out and everything. I keep a little piece of plastic underneath the, the top of it so it doesn't, um, dry out constantly. So now I'm ready for the attachment of the um, the walls and the base. So I'm just cleaning off some of the crusty areas that I had on there first to get it all nice and level and then I'm going to score aggressively. Now notice again the thickness of my bottom edge. It's thicker, right? So it's it's probably like three quarters of an inch thick. It just kind of flares out down there at the end. Sometimes people refer to that as a skirt or I sometimes call it like the little bottom of a mountain there. That gives me a lot of nice area so when I go to attach this, it will work well. Now I'm using some thick slip. You could just use water, but with an attachment like this, I like to really make sure that I'm filling in all of those gaps. So then I'm just gonna stick that on there Okay, and the slip does gush out a little bit. Now before I clean this, I am gonna let this just kind of sit to the side, let that slip firm up a little bit, and then I'll come back in there and I'm gonna tidy it up with uh, a paintbrush and possibly a sponge later. Although you have to be careful if you use a sponge and grogged clay. So I'm gonna put this away, and honestly, I should have done it later in that day or the next morning, but. I forgot to cover it in my cabinet and it went 48 hours instead of 24. So now you can see all the, th the slip in there. I'm gonna just take a stiff bristled paintbrush and I'm going to just rub over all that slip. That's gonna clean it up and um, really kind of fill in any little gaps or grooves that I have there. And again, you can see that my clay is drier than it should be. The edge of that is definitely drier than leather hard. The bottom's a little bit softer, but that's what I get for putting it in my cabinet and then forgetting about it. Um, we were setting up our district art show and I just totally ran out of time to take care of it before I left school on it, late on a Friday. And then the exterior bottom where I had beveled it, now this all needs to get cleaned up. So I can come in here, take a hard rib, scrape off anything that looks like it's a bulky thing sticking out. And of course, if, if I were doing this when it was leather hard, it would be a much faster process. This is a little bit more time consuming when it's a little bit dry. But then I also take my wet paintbrush, the stiff bristled paintbrush with water, and I'm really just cleaning that up. Again, you have to be very careful. If you're using a grogged clay, I don't recommend using a sponge to clean up stuff like this because if you sponge on grogged clay, you're going to remove the tiny particles and leave behind the large particles, which are the grog and the grit. So you can see how I've been cleaning that up and then um, just really try to make it look as clean as you possibly can. You can make your craftsmanship intentional. Hopefully you got something out of this and you'll try this on your own. Uh, experiment with shapes. Of course, you don't have to stick with ovals. Um, play around with the idea of bottomless cylinders because they can be a ton of fun. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Drop me any questions that you might have in the comments below.